Welcome to 2020, A Class Dismissed, a video series dedicated to sharing untold stories and experiences from the spread of COVID-19, told directly by the sources themselves, main high school seniors of the class of 2020. Rebecca Packard has grown up in the town of Durham, which forms the very southern tip of Androscoggin County, and she's a senior at Freeport High. Have you grown up in Durham your whole life? Yeah, I've lived here my entire life. Do you like it? I do, yeah. We're way out in the middle of nowhere, so it's nice because we can go walk in the woods and we don't have to stay exclusively in the house all the time. You're naturally socially distanced. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> what have you been doing just to sort of pass time and, and entertain yourself during the day? I do a lot of drawing. Okay. I like to draw portraits of uh, pets a lot. Animals in general or just like your pets? Um, animals in general. I will like message people on social media and ask for pictures of their pets so that I can draw them. Nice. <laughs> Is art a direction you're hoping to head in? After Not really. It's just a hobby for me. Uh, passes the time and it's fun to do. We had a couple of family game nights. Cool. We played some Scrabble. So uh, my dad dominated. <laughs> <laughs> what does he do for work? My dad is an electrician at BIW. What's BIW? Bath Ironworks. Oh, okay. Nice. Is he still able to work? He is, but he's been staying home. Just by choice? Yeah, they gave them the option to take unpaid time off. And he's been taking it because my mom is an oncology nurse. Ah. So we're taking all the precautions so that she doesn't get sick. How is her work going right now? It's stressful, yeah. but uh, so far they haven't had any cases or anything. Where do things stand with school at the moment? So our school switched to everything online on March 16th. Okay. Um. So we've been doing a lot of online classes, but teachers are free to do whatever they want, really. So some sense? teachers like, some teachers do like Zoom meetings, other teachers just send out documents with instructions. Oh, interesting. And yeah, some don't even send out anything until like every few random days. And has that been hard and frustrating to work with? It's been a little bit hard for me personally because I kind of fell into this slump where I felt like, what's the point of even doing it anymore? Um, felt, came, came out of that, but I like just ditched school for a good week. and How far didn't... into the online period did that happen? Uh, it was about two weeks in. The first, the first two weeks I was pretty disciplined and did my best to make sure everything worked. And then it just kind of trickled off. And now I've got back into it. <laughs> what caused that? Like, do you, was there anything in particular that all of a sudden just flipped and you're like, no, this, I, I don't want to do this? Well, I think it was because we were supposed to go back in two weeks. Yeah. And then you get the whole notice that you're not going to go back for another few months and then you're not going to go back at all. And it's like, well, if we're not going to go back, then what's the point of all of this? So what are you missing the most then about school where presumably you didn't have this mentality, right? You would have been there in class and engaged. So mm -hmm. what have you been missing the most about that setting? I'd say the structure. Yeah. Having that set schedule that you have to follow. Like if your favorite YouTuber uploads in the middle of math class, you can't just click off and go watch that video. You have to stay focused on math and then you can watch the video later. But when you're in quarantine, it's hard to convince yourself to go and not watch the video and keep doing your math work. Yeah. I feel that struggle. <laughs> I really feel that struggle. <laughs> yeah, it's also nice having the teacher right there. Yeah. If you have questions or comments or and the teacher's there to explain the directions and it's easier when you have someone telling you what to do rather than like watching a video or reading a block of text. Have you found that like there was that switch for you that in school 
you could have a certain mental state and at home there was a different mental state? Yes, 100%. And I knew that before quarantine even started. Um, we have an open campus option at our school. Yep. So if you have study halls or lunch periods, you can leave. But I never signed the form because I knew that if I left during a study hall, I would not use that time efficiently at all. So I would sit at the school and I would do my work at the school because I knew I had a better chance of getting it done if I was in those walls. Right. And now, and now that I'm at home all the time, it's harder to focus. And I'm sure it's just harder to make that delineation in your mind, right? I mean, mm -hmm. if you do all your work in your room, then your daily commute, so to speak, is from your bed <laughs> to your desk. And like, there's no real, even physical separation between, you know, a place of study and a place of relaxation. Exactly. My bed is about a foot from my desk. Oh, that's a very short commute. <laughs> <laughs> very, very short. Has it set in fully yet that you're not going back at all? Um, I think so. Just because I, I have gotten into a schedule and I've kind of accepted that I don't get to go back and I probably won't get to do a lot of things, but what disappointed me the most was the Model UN conference getting canceled. Oh, tell me about that. I've done Model UN for the past three years mm -hmm. and my first year I didn't do that well because I was learning the ropes, figuring everything out. And then last year I got one of the smaller awards. So this year I was hoping that I could go in and get maybe one of the bigger awards and do really really well and then it was canceled and it's my last chance to do it so that was really disappointing for me so my knowledge of model un there's generally a lot of prep work that goes into it because you really have to take on that persona of the, the country and the policies that you represent had you invested a lot already into this work before it got canceled we hadn't received our country assignments yet okay but we had been doing work on parliamentary procedures and rules of debate and I was helping some of the younger kids learn how to do it and it was kind of sad to see that they wouldn't experience their first conference and I wouldn't get to go to my last. If you were to give a shout out to anyone in particular or any experience or anything at all regarding this code experience, who would you, or what would you give a shout out to? I would give a shout out to all the grocery store workers because I was in that position uh, not long ago and I am taking time off because of COVID-19, but all of them are still working and still out there. And I have friends in my class that are still working and it's just crazy to me that they're working all the time and a lot of the kids in my class are also doing all their schoolwork while putting in lots of hours at the grocery store. And like some of them miss a couple Zoom meetings because they have to go to work. So shout out to them. Definitely wishing you the best of luck next year. Thank you. Absolutely. And, and thank you for taking your time to do this. We really appreciate it. Yeah, of course it was fun.